here we are. We're at the painting step. Um, it's always important to have good prep to take the time and make sure that you have your water, your sponge, your place where you're going to put your paint, your paintbrush, your paint. Uh, if you like gloves, I love gloves. It's, it's the uh, lab worker in me, the chemist in me likes to put on gloves whenever I'm doing stuff with weird bottles. Um, I like having little tiny paint brushes and I usually leave paper towels nearby on the off chance that everything doesn't go perfectly, which is a rarity. So it's always good to have everything you need ready to go because once you're covered in paint, the last thing you want to do is go trouncing around the house trying to get paint off of things. Um, it helps when you can just peel your hands off. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, it's always good to have paper towels around. So what we're going to do is we're going to start painting. And this is going to be, oh god, a wash. And when I say a wash, uh, for the details, what we're looking to do is to make this entire interior section black. I intend to paint this border red. So it'll be a red highlight. And then the crane itself will be red. We're not worried about the highlights as much. We're just trying to capture the low lights. So where the steel strip is going to be, that's also going to get black paint. And this interior will get plant, um, black paint as well. So we're going to be pouring that into our cup. And I always try to add just enough. And I can always add more paint later. But it's really hard to pour paint back into these little tiny bottles with a little neck. So just know you can add paint again later if you need to. And a little goes a long way here. We're going to use the, what is this? It's like an inch and a half chip brush. I prefer the one inch chip brush. It's, you know, about that big. But this is what I've got. So that's what we're going to work with. And it's going to give me a lot of coverage really quick which is good because I don't have a lot of details, but when I get to the detail work, that's when I'm going to switch to the uh, little tiny detail brush. So exciting. So we're just liberally applying it everywhere that's not my crane. And because it's a big circle, it's pretty easy to go around. If I had um, the more complex design where there's sort of three cranes intersecting, I would spend more time with the small brush doing that detail work. But right now I'm just trying to get everything with a light coating of black. That's gonna seal the leather, make sure it doesn't mold. And we just wanna make sure that the paint isn't drying out too thick, it's not too thin, and that we know where our embossing perimeter is. I'm just making sure to take the time to do the edge work and if you go over, that's okay, because you're going to come back with the red and chase those details in again. Depending on how much painting you do, you start to learn that the, the embossed borders that we've created are enough of a guide to really corral most of the bristles on the paintbrush. And then you can sit there and get really hyper-focused on those details to make sure that as you, you cut in your lines, they look exactly like you want. I just want to make sure everyone can see what's happening. It's so weird. You're sitting, doing all this painting, and you know someone's on the other end, but they can't yell at you. <laughs> Usually I'm, I'm expecting questions about this time, about what do I do here? What do I do there? And I'm not getting them. So I have to think about what I'm thinking about in my head and then just say it out loud. So everyone gets a sense of um, the thought process here because as you're doing your, your detail work you know it's like oh well what am I worried about what am I not worried about um, what's most important what's least important and we're just trying to get all the broad details with this big fat brush and this leather is super dry in the previous video I'm like I left it in front of the heater and this thing has like no water in it um, which isn't the best but then again if you remember back from the beginning demo, this is this is some haggard leather that uh, has had a bit of a rough life, so it's it's getting a second life and a little bit of love and care, even though it was 
abused in front of the heater. So there we go. We've got most of our details. Um, this center place is going to take forever to fill with this tiny brush, right? So you want to make sure that uh, while you've got the chip brush out, you do a liberal coating on the interior of all the spots that are not the edge detailing that you're worried about. And then I'm going to coat the interior again with the chip brush and then we'll rinse it out and I'll come back with the detailing brush to make sure that um, all those crane details get filled in. So once you've made this bracer you have your giant leather taco and you keep asking yourself how am I going to get my my brush in there and that's when the chip brush comes in handy because it's going to soak up a bunch of the paint and it's going to allow you to get a lot of the edge work done on this interior side which is just not pleasant to try and try and paint. Um, the interior of the veg tan always has this texture from the hide where the connective tissue is separated from the animal and it's very absorbent so it'll use the last of your black uh, very quickly so that's always something to be aware of so it's just going to soak up anything you had left so I'm just trying to leave enough black so I can, when I'm done painting the interior, that I can do my detail work. And if I run out, I can always just take more from the bottle. Me hanging out with the robot, just awkwardly staring. There we go. I'm going to make sure we get all of the interior and if you're handed right you're left-handed or right-handed you'll find that you're gonna have to switch hands at least once to try and get the angle you're looking for for everything so you'll see on this interior side of the taco right here it's really hard to see if I can get the camera to show it it's like dark and poorly lit and we're trying to get paint in there and it's black paint but just know I'm rubbing the brush bristles aggressively along that interior to get that area where the grommets are going to be set because we want that to seal up. Remember, vegetable tan leather can mold and so you want to make sure it's fairly watertight because you don't want to have your armor mildew in the closet when you're ready to go out. Whether you're a cosplayer or it's for Halloween or just, you know, date night, whatever you've got planned. Who knows? I never know what people are wearing their armor for. It's not really my business. All right, so there we go. This little perimeter is going to be super thirsty. And this, this edging right here, I may come back and shave down again and have to repaint. That's okay. Um, it really depends on whether or not uh, rivets are used. And that's going to be the primary limitation. All right, so I'm going to add just a little more black. There we go. One thing I found is if you can pinch it with the web space of your hand, uh, it allows you to touch something without transferring paint to every surface. Because for some reason, we don't really get paint there normally. Just going to have a, add a light amount. Cap back on. There we go. And you'll notice I left my chip brush laying inside my bracer because I knew that if it got paint on the bracer, it was going to be okay. That's not an issue that I'm worried about. But what we want to avoid is, you know, setting the chip brush down anywhere other than the cardboard or the table, right? Because if you're doing this at home, your friends, your family, your housemates are going to wonder why there's paint all over the place. And you're going to have to explain, well, when I was making this armor, I forgot to lay down uh, a space to paint, right? And so you can use cardboard, you can use newsprint, you can use whatever. But we want to make sure that this interior section gets thoroughly coated with black paint. All right, so there we are. You can see we still have some details to do there. So now... 
we're going to add that little bit of black paint we need for the detail section. And then anything left over is going to be used to coat the interior. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is this crane eye is going to be really tricky to get um, painted. And so I'm going to want to put a little dot right here. And then we'll be able to chase it back with the red. So it's okay to go over the borders the first time with your background color and then chase them back a second time with your foreground color. So I'm using the chili red and I think this is the flat black. Yeah, it's flat black. So as we do this light chasing of detail work, we wait for the paint to dry and then we can switch to the red and paint our highlights. And it's okay if you screw up because you can always come back, put your low lights back in. But the low lights are a lot more stressful because you have to make sure that your brush is guided only in those tiny grooves, right? You're not going beyond it in any way. So I'm always making sure that my brush just gently fits in those lines and I've got good hand position. You want to be calm, have a steady hand. So if you're nervous or if you've had caffeine or... You know, you have to pee, any of those things. You just want to make sure that you address the shakiness before you do those details. You don't want to have tremors mid-paint because everything is going to just move around. And we don't want that. We want nice, smooth, clean lines. So we're going to take the time to do that. And now that I've got the crane painted, the perimeter at least, I'm going to just chase these edges and make sure that they match the embossed border that we put in oh so long ago. Right there, a little bit more. There's a spot that I missed. So the chip brush does a pretty good job of getting all those broad strokes in, but I'll always come back with the fine tip brush just to make sure that all of that line work looks the way I intended. Okay, and You have to remember over here we're going to have our steel stripping and that's going to make it look a little different, but we're not going to attach our grommets or our rivets until we're done with all of the painting because it's really hard to paint around rivets and grommets and um, it's really hard to paint under things you've already riveted to a surface. So usually what you do is you paint it, you put it all together, and then anything you scratch when you're putting it together, uh, you paint again. And that's okay. So this is our black. Looks great. I'm done with my uh, detailing brush. I don't have any major lines that I want to cut in again. I'm going to just toss that in there. That way it doesn't clog. And then we're going to make sure we get this end piece, which is sucked up still a bunch of paint. We're going to make sure that we get that nice and thoroughly coated. Again, checking for any spots that are still brown that haven't gotten the paint we were looking for. You really want to make sure that it soaks it up. Because when you come back with your other color, you know, if you're doing a two-tone, it's not just monochromatic. Um, it's really hard to try and draw those lines once once you've gotten to this sort of fuzzy interior texture. Um, it gets very wavery. So as long as you go up to that line with your your paint, you should be fine. And then when you're painting the smooth side of the leather, it's much easier. It goes very quickly. And you go, oh, I'm so glad I did the hard part first. And now I don't have to spend all this time fighting trying to get this last little bit to hold color. Um, because painting these edges is a little bit troublesome. All right, so we're totally soaked in. We're gonna call that good. So once it's dry, we'll come back with the red.